So my name's John. I've uh, been a customer of Living Entertainment for about four years now. I started my hi-fi journey probably about 12 years ago. Had the great opportunity to sit and have an old friend of mine play me his hi-fi system. And up until then, um, I'd sort of felt like hi-fi was a little bit esoteric and, and it was about classical music and not really for me. So my hi-fis were always consumer level, all-in-one integrated, and I thought that was really the ceiling for um, the style of music I listened to, which has sort of come from blues infested rock and roll and over the years along with folk has become fairly country or old country influenced. When I finally got a chance to listen to the sort of music I like on a hi-fi, the system was a Sugden solid state amplifier. Uh, the speakers were Sonus Faber Cremonas, the little uh, smaller bookshelves. Uh, Nordost was the loom, uh, and the turntable uh, was an older Riga P9. And that, that heavily influenced my decisions when I first got into hi-fi. So the exciting thing for me was the experience that the hi-fi delivered in terms of staging, in terms of reveal, hearing uh, brushes on drums, hearing what the instrument was made out of, the space between notes in the music, the decay of an instrument falling off into air in this sort of cinematic experience that the, that the background was like black velvet. So I come from a photography background. My career has always been involved in photography, whether as a photographer, a a wholesaler, a retailer, and today I work as chairman of the board of Rallaroo, which is the, the parent company of Camera House Australia. So I have a love of photography and there's a lot of parallels I find between my hi-fi experience and what I enjoy in creating an image and what I perceive as what makes an image fantastic. The nuances between not just detail, but shadows and highlights, and the way in photography we control exposure to reveal shades in the image that are important to us, particularly in black and white photography. You know, as parallels to that, that quest we go on in hi-fi to maintain the base and have a revealing base, not a boof boof base, like a photograph having no shadow detail. Highlights extending, you know, detail into the whites of a, a photograph or the high key tones in a photograph and that capacity to reveal treble in hi-fi without it becoming painful to listen to. You know, it's about controlling the, the treble to keep it, whether it be through your equipment or room treatment, to keep detail in the, the treble, just like in photography where you're exposing for highlights to keep tone. So lots of parallels between photography for me and you know what I chase personally in the experience hi-fi gives me. Mm -hmm. 
So my system today still has some pieces of that first system. Oh, not my first system, but the same heritage, I guess. My speakers are Sonus Faber Cremona floor standards. You know, they must be dated or oh, 2005, 2006. Turntable is a Riga RP10 and it's running uh, moving coil um, Afita 2 stylus and cartridge. That plays through a Luxman phono stage. I went through a period of obsession with phono stages and I think at one point I owned about five and just chasing what I really felt delivered best. So I, I, I didn't just audition, but I, I lived with them and rotated them and made sure. And the winner for me was the Luxman. Maybe the fact I have a Japanese wife and she loves Japanese brands made it a little bit easier to convince the better half to agree with the purchase. The amplifier's a Prima Luna Dialog HP and tube-based, extraordinary value for money. Not the cheapest, not the dearest amp on the market, but absolutely uh, tasty to listen to. I've probably had it for three-ish years now. Uh, in, in terms of loom, uh, it's still Nordost for me. I, I have the, the floor pack from Nordost. I have uh, a series of power cables from Brahma uh, through, to, through Red Dawn to Blue Heaven. And in terms of speaker cables, I have first series uh, Nordos Blue Heaven. benefits that I've received as a, a, a customer of, of Living Entertainment. They understand the, the analog approach to music, but they're willing to take you on the journey down digital, even when you've told them, ah, digital's not for me. So Nat and the team there teased me with a bunch of products to say, you know, John, it, it can have some value, but appreciate the investment you've made into the front end of your analog system and be reasonable when you compare analog to digital in terms of uh, investment. So a bit like my obsession with phono stages, I then became obsessed with DAX and through Living Entertainment, I got to audition four or five units, but again, I, I came, came back to Prima Luna with their DAC, having listened carefully, and I think it's a noticeably better experience, particularly if you come from that analog background. You know, I have, I have friends who are, are more detail-oriented digital music fans, uh, that's that's not for me. I needed I needed digital to impersonate analog to satisfy me, um, and the Living Entertainment guys really helped me through that process. So feeding Rune into uh, as the digital player uh, into the Premium Luna DAC 100 is a uh, a little lime tree bridge. The Lime Tree Bridge is a transport only, and when I went through the process, I, I just felt whilst there's, there's a number of these combined units that are appealing, I, I just felt by separating the two, it allowed me to, if I should ever want to, go on an upgrade path on each component. You can't 
don't be into hi-fi and not fall for a few tweaks to your system. And, and the single biggest one for me was the ISO Acoustics Gaia. Isolation feet for the, uh, that I use on the Sonus Faber Cremona um, floor standers. Now I don't know if it's because I have a wooden floor. I don't know if it makes a difference if you're using, you know, carpet on concrete or whatever, but on my wooden floors, when I attached those isoacoustic feet to my speakers, it was, it was a revelation. It, it, it wasn't small, it was massive. Totally refocused the vocals. So if you ever get a chance, have a listen to them because they, they're just a no brainer. I then went on to further isolate my system with ISO acoustics with some of the little puck feet and I used those under the amplifier and the phono stage. kind of impossible to just pick a few records to talk about because you know I, I kind of love them all and it's a day-to-day -day thing you know it's like what you play on a Sunday is different to what you play on a Friday night or how you're feeling one week to the next so it's really difficult but I, I just picked out a couple to, to talk about first one Beck C change on uh, MoFi, uh, if you can find one of those. There's a couple of tracks on there which are, are sort of my auditioning songs if I'm listening to new gear. Beautifully layered, full experience. Just put it on side A and go. There's, there's no, you don't need to pick a track, just go. Roy Buchanan, it's a bit floppy because it's actually currently on the turntable. Started out as a Stevie Ray Vaughan fan and still am, but if you like guitar playing, have a crack at this guy. Great, rec great recording. A little bit country as I, I lean these days. Gillian Welsh took her forever to release vinyl, like maybe a decade after some of the records you know, some of her recordings came out. No vinyl, no vinyl. Finally released them a few years back. Get them all. Great. A sentimental favourite, John Prine. Awesome songwriter. Great delivery. Saw him in Brisbane. Well, I saw Roy Buchanan. I don't know if I'm the jinx, but I saw Roy Buchanan in Brisbane. Must have been back in the 80s. Uh, early 90s, late 80s I think. Uh, maybe a year or so before he hung himself in a jail cell. John Prine sadly passed away from COVID. Uh, this was his last LP. Um, saw him in Brisbane at concert. The best concert I've ever been to and I, I, I've been to plenty. Bob Dylan, Blood on the Tracks. I reckon I own, I don't know how many you know, this is a 1974 re release. I must have owned 50 copies in various formats over the years. This, uh, again, is a MoFi release, unopened. Don't have to. Why did I get it? Because I had to. That's what you do. To finish off, you got to finish off with the dude, just because it's a lifestyle decision. Big Lebowski, great movie, great soundtrack, and of course, opens with Bob Dylan's The Man In, um, the Man in Me. So, um, yeah, to the dude. <laughs>
Murray Patterson, who uh, co-writes uh, with, or, or co-wrote for a period and, and played with uh, Tex Perkins uh, on his series of albums with the Dark Horses. So a few co-writes uh, that were a part of the Dark Horses um, and also uh, a couple of um, songs on uh, Tex Don and Charlie's release, uh, which was called All Is Forgiven. And my brother's co-writes were Whenever It Snows and Paychecks, probably with some others. And uh, my brother's uh, current endeavor with um, a few good friends of his, a few of those being Melbourne players, Headland. Um, series of albums, I think they're up to, this is actually uh, an EP called Cozy. Three or four albums out now, probably more successful in Europe than Australia, but it was a, a, a process that started with uh, having grown up in the Northern Rivers in the surf culture. He went back, dug out Super 8 film from uh, his mates' uh, cupboards and under their beds and digitised it, created a fictional film and wrote a soundtrack uh, to that film. So Headland Soundtrack, uh, Cozy EP amongst others, have a listen, appreciate it. Thanks for dropping by, uh, Nat and Gabby, part of the team there at Living Entertainment. Awesome to see you guys. Great to tell uh, the story as to why I'm into hi-fi and the sort of things I like. Don't be afraid to uh, sledge Nat from time to time if you find him on the end of the phone. It's a constant source of entertainment for me. He can take it, but beware you might get a little bit back from time to time.